The next application of the division rule that we run into all the time, it gets its own name as well, and this is a combination. This is also called the choose function. The idea of this one is we are still doing selection out of n objects, but for the combinations in the choose function, uh, we have of n objects. We are going to choose R without order. Really what we're talking about now is for my n objects, I'm going to break them into two groups. I'm going to break them into we choose R and we do not choose the n minus r. And so I have two groups. I have the r group and the n minus r group. Now, for this particular problem, this will become how many ways can I arrange n objects? That's still n factorial. But on the other hand, for the people that we choose without order, that just simply says that, for example, if I put the people on a committee, if I put r people on a committee, I say, hey, you person one, two, three, four, five, I don't, your numbers don't matter, but for you r, go into that room and you're on a committee, I don't care what your arrangement is. If they decide to sit around at a table in a particular way, for these R people, there are R factorial arrangements of them. And since I don't really care about what they, how they arrange themselves, I have to divide it away. And the same is people that have not been chosen. If we do not choose N minus R, those N minus R also have their N minus R factorial arrangements. And so this would be the way to, when we break a single group of people into two groups, we divide the n factorial total arrangements divided by arrangements of group one, arrangements of group two. We just call the group one the chosens and the n minus r factorial the non-chosens for this problem. Again, uh, for the definition of this. Uh, notation, we usually use CNR for the choose function. Sometimes we use an elongated C, which is an elongated parenthesis, and this is just simply N factorial is how you arrange all N people. R have been chosen, but their arrangements don't matter to me. N minus R have not been chosen, so their arrangements don't matter to me as well, so I have to divide it away by the division rule. And these are an R combination. from n objects, or we would just simply say of n choose r without order. So if I'm choosing and order does not matter, I'm going to use this particular function. All right, let's try an example for this guy. So example, so I want to choose 10 people to play softball and from 16 people and those 16 are equal to 11 guys and then five girls and so part a just simply choose 10 and if I just say choose 10, your assumption would be without order. If I would say pick 10, your assumption would be with order. So if it's choose 10 without order, what we're doing is saying that we are going to, from the 16, choose 10. I could have written it like this, 16, 10, choose function, which is simply 16 factorial arrangements of all 16. 10 have been chosen, but I don't care where they go. Six have not been chosen, I don't care where they go. And so that would be my formula. On the other hand, if I would say B, if I would say pick 10, and I'm using the word pick, I'm most likely saying with order. Well, then we're talking about the permutation function. So six, I'm going to pick 10, which is going to be 16 factorial divided by, and we divide by the overcount. Well, what's the overcount? It's the people on the bench. I don't care about the six factorial people, and so. I'm going to pick people, telling them what position they play, and then divide, a, divide away by the people sitting on the bench. And so we can actually use both for these type of problems. 
But on the other hand, I could actually take this and do something a little more advanced. We could do things like, uh, say, C. I'm going to choose 10 and exactly 3 must be girls. Well, when we would do that, we would simply say, okay, how would you go about, you know, making sure that you had exactly three girls? Well, if I was going to make exactly three girls, I would first choose the girls, right? So I'm going to first, again, counting problems are how would you physically do this? Well, how would I do it? I would choose three girls and I would then choose seven guys. So that's how I would get 10 people with exactly three girls. I would choose three girls and I would choose seven guys. Well, how would I choose three girls? Well, in my problem here, I know that five are girls and 11 are guys. So how do I choose three? Well, of the five girls, I'm going to choose three and is the product rule choose seven guys. Well, there's 11 guys. So of the 11, I'm going to choose seven. And so this would be equal to five factorial divided by three factorial, two factorial times 11 factorial divided by seven factorial, four factorial. So here's one problem where I've used the product rule focusing on the word and I'd used combination function, combination function in, ter in terms of doing uh, the choice function and putting all that together, I would get this. Obviously, when you would have a problem like this and you would look in the back of the book, you would get a single number. So you still need to be able to multiply those out. Again, for exams, I would rather you leave it in factorial notation.